Welcome to today's part of this SPSS methodology, this time with a unit on exploratory data analysis. In a previous unit we already discussed how we could use the menu frequencies or the command frequencies to get output of the most frequent univariate statistics, so basically all the common measures of central tendency, dispersion and distribution. In this unit we will turn to the command explore, which offers similar output but adds some additional interesting insights to it. If we click here, we see we can also enter our variables in the dependent list. So let's again select the body mass index, put this here, and then, well, if we directly click on OK, we would get the same output or comparable output to what we got with the frequencies. However, this command offers us some additional interesting insights as well. So we, if we click additionally on statistics, here we could select the outliers, giving us a nice overview which cases might be considered as outliers. So this would be the first part. The second part, that if we go on plots, here we could either select the histogram or if instead of just having like a graphical idea, graphical comparison of histogram, of the actual histogram, the actual distribution and a theoretical normal distribution, here we could run a test on this. So we could test whether our data set is actually normally distributed. This will leave for later time so in this context we just click on continue and as this already covers what we did before if we have however um, names for the different observations so if every person entered for example his or her name we could put this here in label cases by so this would be interesting because then the box plot for example would tell us or the outlier analysis would tell us specifically who the outliers are. In this case, they will just report case numbers. It's still good, but well, you could add to this if you have additional information. Okay, with this additional comment, let's just click on OK. And we get here the overview how many of our data set, how many observations of our data set set could actually be processed, how many were missing data. And the next table already gives us all the statistics we know from the frequency command. We have the mean, we have the median. Okay, we don't have the mode, but in this case it doesn't make sense to get the mode. We have our variance, our standard deviation. We have the range and the interquartile range. So all the measures of dispersion as well, and the skewness and the kurtosis, giving us basically the same things as we got when we had the frequencies command. An interesting thing to add here, we also get the 5% trimmed mean, meaning he excludes the worst 5%, giving us an outlier cleaned version of our mean of our data set. We see, well, this is 21.6. The original mean was 21.8. So this is slightly not so much larger. So this could mean that there are some significant larger values, but not so much, not so many. This is then illustrated in more detail in the next table where we have like the highest five and the lowest five values. We see here, well, our mean was 21.8, that the larger values are significantly far away from this, in particular those two. So those are the ones which actually bias, which actually influence our mean significantly. Those are also relatively large, but not as severe as those two. So this could tell us directly that ideally we would exclude 
those two observations, so observation 284 and observation 43 from our data set. Then the next part, here we get our histogram showing us that we have quite some more smaller values than larger values, but we have here those two outliers we already detected up here and some of those values which were the next largest outliers. This is illustrated in a slightly different version in this stem and leaf plot. However, more interesting for us would be here this box plot. This box plot is slightly different from the box plot one might know in so far as that the whiskers are determined by taking the difference or the distance from median to first quartile and then multiply this with 2.5 and this gives us the length for the lower whisker the same one median to upper quartile do this one two and a half time and you get the upper whisker why is this done because this allows us to get an idea who are outliers and of those outliers who are normal outliers and who are severe outliers and well here we can see in the lower parts so those with a BMI of 17 point something they are not significant outliers however the two guys we already identified with the outliers with the 27 point something and 33 point something they are severe outliers which we can see from the stars they are marked with and the other ones if we turn to our histogram that's the guys here around 30 they are also considered outliers not as severe as those two but also significant outliers so those two should be excluded from our data set for sure. Here we might have to think about it. Might make sense to include exclude them because then we can be sure that we only have a halfway homogeneously distributed data set. Well, this was so far all the information we could get from this exploratory data analysis. This also concludes the session. I hope you enjoyed it and take, took something from it f with you. And if you want to see more of videos like this, please refer to the rest of the SPSS methodology as well. Until then, see you and goodbye.